Hi, my name is Emmanuel Obodo. I'm a specialist biomedical scientist and I'm also a lecturer in biomedical science here in the United Kingdom. I completed my PhD in biomedical science. I have extensive experience working in NHS hospital as a specialist biomedical scientist. I have used these experiences to help a number of people navigate through interview questions and therefore get their dream job as a biomedical scientist. I'm here to help you navigate interview questions, thereby increasing your chances of getting a job as a biomedical scientist. What I would ask is that you like, share, comment, and subscribe to our page. Thank you very much. I thought that I should just make quick videos today regarding some common questions as well they ask in blood transfusion. So here we go. Number one is what is electronic issue? what is electronic issue so i'm going to give you a background before i define that electronic issue for you i now have made a video on issuing blood the things you need to look at so if you've not watched that video you go and watch it okay but let's get on with this what is electronic issue so when we talk about electronic issue remember that you shouldn't issue any blood without doing a cross match but again i want you to imagine doing a cross match of every request that you get that is gonna it will be a lot of work for um, the biomedical scientists so because of that we have what we call computer cross match so let me also make the background the other way around so the limbs that's laboratory information management system arranged in a certain ways where they cannot allow you to do some certain things okay so sometimes if you want to issue blood to any patient okay the system the limbs will not allow you to do that but if the limbs allow you to issue blood to someone without necessarily doing a cross match, then you can consider what we call electronic issue. So that's just like a background. Another example I'm going to give you is that, for example, you know that O positive, whether A positive or B positive or AB, once you are any other blood group, O positive or O negative can be given to you. But even if you are A positive, the limbs will not allow someone to issue you O positive, except if the person had to override the limbs. So these are the things put in place, okay, to checkmate the individual, making sure that we work safely. So because of that, once somebody have a historic antibody, okay, once somebody does not have a current blood group, okay, the person is no longer eligible for a computer cross match in other words for you to just issue the blood without necessarily doing cross match therefore what is electronic issue i would not want you to answer the question that i answered when i started this uh, profession at the early stage i tell you i'm gonna make a joke about this so i was asked what is electronic issue in one of my questions for some reasons i don't know why i started thinking about electrical and I started thinking about problem, electronic, electrical, issue, problem. So I started talking about maybe when there is a electrical problem within the laboratory. That is not it. Electronic, okay, means computer. Issue means giving blood, okay? So electronic issue can be defined actually when the computer or the system or limbs allows you to issue a group specific to a patient without necessarily doing serological cross match this can happen if there is a current group there is no history of any antibody then you can be able to do the electronic issue this definition i've given to you is the simplest way i want to make it forget i don't want to go by what you can see on google so i'm going to repeat that again electronic issue is a system is a process by which the system which is the limbs allows you to issue a group specific to a patient without necessarily doing cross serological cross match and this can happen if there are historic and current group and there is no history of antibody in that patient like antibody screening positive or antibody panel being positive once there's no such history then the system will allow you to issue group specific and that is called electronic issue okay so i've answered that question the next question they ask is when do we give routine anti-D to a pregnant woman. Remember that for you to give anti-D, which some people call Rogan, okay, for you to give that means that woman has to be ROH negative. That is D antigen negative. So when, if, if someone who is A negative, B negative, AB negative, 
O negative. When the person is ROHG negative or D antigen negative, if that woman is pregnant, if that lady is pregnant, we need to give anti D. When do we give anti D? Routinely. I want you to mark the keyword routinely. So if that pregnancy is without any complication, no issues, we give anti D first at 28 weeks of gestational period. Okay? Then another time we can give anti D is post delivery. That's after delivery. That is the routine time we give anti D. However, if there are any kind of sensitization, okay, maybe the woman start feeling pain, as the case may be, you know, from 12 weeks we can give anti D at any time that episode occurs. Let me repeat this again. So routinely, no problem, we give anti D at 28 weeks and post delivery. But after 12 weeks, if the woman comes with any form of complaint, at any time that happens after 12 weeks, we should give anti D. Okay? That is for that. Now, another thing I would like to mention now is the question they ask you. Which blood do you give to any woman within bearing of age? Which blood shall be given to any woman within bearing of age? Any woman within bearing of age must be given antigen K negative blood. Antigen K negative blood. Okay? So, meaning if that woman is A positive or B positive or AB, whatever blood group that woman is, if you are giving that woman blood, you need to make sure that that donor cell will be antigen K negative, big K negative blood. Okay? Why? I'm going to tell you the reason. Why do we need to do that? Why not? like other antigens like d antigens or c antigens as the case may be we are more concerned about k antigen because if that woman develop antibody k if the woman becomes pregnant and that antibody k attack the baby it will not just cause hemolysis are you getting me it can affect the baby's bone marrow and therefore affecting the production of the red blood cell in the baby so that is where we are particular that's where we really want to avoid that Remember everything I've said about phenotype and antibody panel and antibody screening. If you've not watched the video, go and watch it. But anyway, any woman within bearing of age must be given antigen K negative blood. And I'll give you the reason. Then another question they do they usually ask is: what is partial D? What is weak D? Before I answer this question, I'm going to try to explain what these things mean. So, for example, you know sometimes, some people have, you do a blood group, you may not see this when you see Thai, even when you do the Thai group, you see any agglutination, you just think it's positive. It's not every positive that you see, okay, is actually D antigen, okay? So, some people have what we call partial D, and some people have what we call weak D. And it is always very important to investigate this, because that will help you know any woman within bearing of age so once we get this kind of result in the lab where we don't know whether it is partial d or it is a weak d we need to investigate this this will help us to make sure that you know if that woman become pregnant as the case may be there won't be any problem and we have our investigation is mainly focused within for women who are within bearing of age we don't investigate it if it is a man we don't investigate it if it is a woman above bearing of age so the whole investigation of whether weak or partial anti, anti d is about pregnancy so we do it when the woman is within bearing of age so now what is partial d and what is weak d okay now let me take this slowly so when you talk about partial d okay it means that there are some epitopes okay of the uh, of the proteins or you know that make up the d antigens so some of the epitope has been made in that patient but the patient does not have the whole complete protein that make up that d antigen okay if the patient does not have that complete protein that make up that d antigen it has some or d antigen that kind of patient what he has got is what we call partial D. Okay? Now, but when you have a patient who has everything, okay, that make up a D antigen, it's just that the reaction is weak, that is called weak D. So you see, in weak D, the antigen basically is weakly expressed, okay? And that is why you get that weak reaction.
So why is it important to differentiate this? It is important to differentiate this because that patient that does not have the complete protein that made up of the D antigen, if you think that that patient is D antigen positive because of the weak reaction, and you treat the person as A positive or B positive or AB positive or O positive, if you give the person O positive blood, which is D antigen positive blood, what it will happen is the person will develop antibody D. Because the person does not have the complete proteins that are made up of that very D antigen. Do you understand that? So when you look at the partial D, you are looking at that you know, patient that does not have all the whole epitopes or all the whole proteins that make up the D antigen. Okay? While when you look at the weak D, you are looking at the patient who have this all the proteins that make up the D antigen, just that the reaction is very weak. That is why we want to differentiate this. So the whole essence of differentiating is, especially for women within bearing of age, is so that if that woman is D antigen partial D, because he does not have the complete protein or complete epitope of that very uh, D antigen, we have to treat that woman as D antigen negative. You see it now? So when someone is partial D, you treat the person as D antigen negative not the antigen positive and i've explained the answer and we do this mainly for pregnant for women within bearing of age here you go so when they ask you these kind of questions here you go that are the answers thank you very much i'll make some more videos for you today you take care bye